Good day and welcome to another episode of the MB Switchgear podcast. Um, so, Eben, today we are talking about switchgear testing and maintenance. That's correct. Yeah, mostly we are going to be focused on secondary switchgear. So, uh, primary switchgear, there would still be a, uh, a few more things, but to limit our time, let's speak about secondary switchgear. Okay, great. So, Eben, tell us what happens in, in the instance of factory testing. Yeah, so obviously the factory needs to make sure that that switchgear that goes out of the factory complies to all the safety regulations and is actually a product that will be reliable and viable in the field. So you will do primary injection testing that will test basically your CTs, your relay and your trip mechanism to make sure that the CTs read the current correctly, the relay interpret the current correctly and, and, and trips at the right levels. The speed of the tripping system is, is sufficient, so primary injection is, is quite a valuable tool. Then also you're going to do ductor test, which will then check that all the connections inside are tight, properly tightened and there's no loose connections. And you can very easily, and we have spotted quite a few instances, yeah. where you can see something that was just not tight enough and you can pick it up with the ductor test. Yes, okay, and then you have your functional test, you want to make sure that everything works as it's supposed to work, that every... Um, Insul uh, isolator or contactor or circuit breaker actually m opens and closes like it's supposed to. You also want to see that all of your uh, live cable live indicators are working and line 1 is line 1, line 2 is line 2. Um, you also want to see that all your interlocks is perfect because if the interlocks are not working perfect people can die. You can open a door where you were not supposed to open a door or close onto something where you were not supposed to close on something. Yes. And then obviously with gas insulated switch can you always do gas leak tests. So you have very sensitive sniffers that you use to, to check if there's a gas leak so that you can catch it before it leaks in the field. And because we use a greenhouse gas SF6, we want to make sure that we give a switch cap that is properly sealed and not leaking in any, in any way. Yes. And then obviously also you have to do the high pot testing as well. Yeah, so high pot is very important to see your insulation level. Um, we, we actually go very high with our high pot, so in, for instance on an 11 kV or a 22 kV uh, we will push it all the way up to 40,000 volts um, and that is way above spec but that's the way that we can ensure that we show that whatever we have in there is clean and it's working. Yes, definitely. And then tell us more about what happens during installation testing. Yeah, so why do we test at installation stage a lot of people say but it just came from the factory it was just tested now why can't I just put it in yeah the main reason for that is you are putting it on a truck or a bucket or some kind of moving equipment and it's shaking all the way to site mm. when you get to site there's a small chance that something might have gone wrong now you put your nice new switch get in switch it on and then you make a big boom so what what you need to do when you get to site site is you do most of these tests again so you're going to do a primary injection test again to make sure that there's nothing that moved in your trip circuit. You are going to do a high pot again. You are going to do a ductor again. And you can actually reference your ductor values on site of what you had in the factory. That will also give you some red flags if there's any. You will check your interlocks. Um, a lot of these interlocks are very based on where it is sitting on the floor. So if your floor has got a little bit of an elevation or a, you know unstableness in it, it will affect your interlocks. Yeah. So it's important to check that. And then your functional test, and then you check for gas leaks again. Um, especially after you've done your cable connections. Yes. Because the cables can hang on your bushings and that creates leaks. Um, so a gas leak test for, for secondary switchgear, especially gas insulated switchgear, is, is super important and then uh, you also test them during maintenance mm. so in maintenance which you're going to do every now and then you are going to do just secondary injection to make sure that your relay is still functional and your trip circuit is still working because a lot of the time your CTs will not be accessible um, or uh, you know it's so tough to get in there you don't want to disconnect the cables uh, so then you're going to do secondary injection which you inject directly into the CT and they are into the relay and then you want to see that it still trips properly also during maintenance you want to look at annual maintenance uh, cleaning lubrication 
and then introduction functionality tests that you need to do on that uh, circuit breaker. Yeah, definitely. And then obviously uh, the lubrication of the, of, the, of the units is very important as well mm. because you don't want any dry bits to get stuck. Yeah, so the, speed, the speed of the operation is affected yeah, by that. Yeah. So a lot of places you, you're working in very dirty environments, it is super important to, to actually get um, an annual maintenance, annual inspection of your switch gear. Um, and then secondly is, is you know, when, when people are going to your site for the first time for maintenance, you have to show them what you have. So some pictures of what you have so that the preparation can be done properly. Great stuff. And that's it for our topic on uh, testing of, of uh, MB switch gear and maintenance. And then, yeah, then we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you.